Hey, what's happening, YouTube? Man, this your man, Cowboy, right here at Premier Leather Crafters in the dirty, dirty South. It's been a minute since I've did one of these videos because I've been extremely busy. I've had several projects going on, several projects outside of the leather business that has been going on. I'm working and doing a whole lot of things. Uh, my speaking engagements picked up to where I travel around and I teach people how they can bring their business into fruition and how they can capitalize and make money through this new way of being a big time earner through social media. So if you guys are out there, if you've seen any of my other seminars or workshops, thank you for stopping by and support. And if you haven't, then I encourage you to check that out. I'm on Facebook uh, under Strategic Target Marketing, or if you would like me to come into your area and teach you how to make money and sell your products online through social media, then all you have to do is check out my other page, book Robert D. Muhammad, and then I will come into your area and we'll set up a workshop and seminar and teach you guys how to do that. But today, I'm not going to talk to you about that part, even though I touched on it just a little bit. What I want to talk to you about is well, I'm back in my wheelhouse with doing the leather business, and I'm coming back with a very important business tip. Now, through the times that I've been doing this, and I know I've did several uh, uh, another video to where we talked about edge burnishing, and along the way, even though with all of my other projects going on, I still managed to go into different parts of the country and talk to the old school leather crafters and get those golden nuggets of information of how to make your products pop and how to make them look more professional and look more uh, on a professional level. I guess you could say that's the best way to say it. So, and there are a whole plethora of things out there. Now, again, you guys always know that I am a Tandy guy. So yes, I have been buying the gum trag. Uh, you'll see that abbreviation uh, a lot, uh, especially especially in the leather gills or on the leather pages. You'll hear a lot of people talking about the gum trag. Now, I don't know how to pronounce this. Trager camp. I guess that's how you can say it. Cat Trager camp. This big weird word right here. Maybe my country grammar is not bringing that out. So a lot of people just say gum track for short. And it is a burnishing agent. Now, this is good. I buy this stuff by the 32 liters. I buy the big bottles of it. Now, and when I first started using this, um, I, for a long time I did. I've heard about gum track, but I never used it in any of my products until actually I saw it work. And the one thing that I like about the gum track, especially when you are marrying two pieces of leather or if you are putting a liner onto a backside of a leather, got a lot of you guys out there who might be making belts or if you're making leather bracelets or even gun holsters, where anytime where you're marrying two pieces of leather together or two materials together. Now, gum track is good because it gives, it's a heating agent and it works best off of the friction. Let me adjust this lighting so you guys can see me a lot better. Um, so uh, when you put this on and you have to shake this stuff up very good because it's thick, it's really super thick. Um, try to give you a glimpse of what this looks like. Um, you can put it on with a dauber, Sometimes I use my finger. Uh, now this just because uh, I pulled it out of the top, but this stuff is thick. It's thicker than uh, it's kind of like a milkshake thickness. The texture, I guess you can say. And the way this works is you put this on your edge, and you would use a um, either your your bone tool or your burnishing tool. Now this is one of mine. I have several. I have another one that's like this. Uh, and then, of course, I have my edge slicker. Now, I have two different types of edge slickers. I have a wood one and a polyurethane one. But whichever one that you're using to slick, even, and don't be uh, surprised if you see a lot of um, crafters, especially your old school crafters, still use burlap. Yes, you can use burlap or denim to burnish. Anything that will work in conjunction or in connection with the gum track that gives it that slick 
finish. Now, the only thing about gum track is gum track does not take dyes or stains very well. So you would, in other words, you would not use the gum track first and then um, apply your dyes uh, or even your edge coat. You wouldn't use this first. You would use this the very last. So you would put your two pieces together. Uh, you can slick those out with just water to get you a nice slick, uh, slick finish to where that heat from the natural fibers of the leather and whatever two materials you're merging together, you'll get that nice slick finish. You can, you can use water. I think I, I think I mentioned that in another video to where that was when I first started out before this stuff was came out or the few tips and secrets that I'm going to share with you today. Um, I used to just burnish, edge burnish with water. I spray the edges and then really put some elbow grease in with one of my slickers. Then came along gum track. I learned about gum track uh, and I started using the gum track. Then I found out that, okay, use your dyes or, or whatever you're using to uh, finish the edges with in that same color, then use the gum track. And it really made those edges pop. It did. Then Tandy, or it probably was already out. I just never, uh, I just, just probably just walked past it on the aisle. Then came in Edge Coat. So I like Edge Coat, depending on what project that I'm working on. I like Edge Coat because Edge Coat has that waxy look to it. So it really made my products stand out as far as having that store-bought finish and it really works it really works great but you still have to burnish the edges and you still have to uh, do your your dyes then you apply your edge coat and then now the one thing about edge coat edge coat took out a process um, because once you put your edge coat on it dries to that waxy shiny look but you still have to put in the elbow grease and work to get it slick now, but as I was out and uh, in my travels, I came across this little jewel right here. And I know you guys don't know what this is, but you can tell that I really use this. This is a beeswax cube. Well, it was a cube. Now it's rounded off because I use this quite a lot. Now, if you want to stick with the traditional ways of uh, edge burnishing, you guys can go and get a two pound bag of beeswax pellets from Wally World for like a dollar and 49 cent. I think it comes out like a dollar 56 cent. And all you would do was uh, get you a, a, a old pot. Don't use your wife's pot. She might be upset with you or don't use your cooking pots. Just get you a nice little old school tin pot. You can get them for a couple of bucks at a Dollar Tree or a Dollar General. And you just melt those beeswax pellets. And then uh, either you can cut you off a chunk or like I did, cut off some squares. And this can go a long way. One square can go a long way with your edging. Now, uh, what I like about this, again, the traditional way uh, ways of edging was with the beeswax. Before the, the old school crafters, before all of this new technology comes up with edge code and uh, gum track, they use beeswax. Now, the great part about beeswax is it is the generation one, I guess you can say, the gen one of edge coat. Now, what I like about this is you rub this onto your edges. Now, the friction of just rubbing it on is going to um, make it look a little cakey on your edges. I guess that's the word to say. It makes it cakes up a little bit. But don't fret. Don't fret. This is one of the edges on a project that I'm working on right now. And this was done with the beeswax. You can see where the beeswax came around the edge a little bit. But, and that's because I run this, I run my piece up through this little channel here. And I do it a lot on belts as well too, especially when I'm uh, putting a backside or a line into belts. But this is the look. You'll see that dull look from where the wax, the beeswax, 
is marrying those two pieces. Now, this is the, my lining and this is my leather, of course. And then you can see that going down through there. Now, I follow this up with my burnishing slicker, my edge slicker. And when you work in this thing with your edge slicker, the friction from the wood and the leather and the beeswax really melts these two pieces together. You guys can see that. Isn't that nice? That is nice. And the more friction that you put on this and the more work that you put to this, I'm just going to give you guys a rough piece because I have one that I didn't finish yet. So I want you to see the before and after. This is it. You can still see that it's just raw with the dye and it's not finished yet. So I'm going to angle this camera down because I want you to see how this works. And then we just take the wax, beeswax, and I'll put this in my little channel that I've been cutting out here. Sometimes you can see that little second part right there. If, and we're just gonna rub this all over my edges. And I use that channel because I got a curve in this piece that I really want to get covered with wax. And you can put this on heavy. It, there's not no such thing as a light coat. Uh, you can put it on heavy and you will know that it's going on because it's going to turn that cakey look. It's going to look real cakey and dull. And we're just going to rub this all across the edges. See, there, there I guess you guys can see how it's cake, the caking up here. That's a good thing. Then I'm going to come right back with my edge slicker. And we're just going to work this. And the friction from the edge slicker and the leather now and this again this is just if you want to stick with tradition now you can become one of those crafters that's just all into the new age way of doing things but i'm gonna tell you don't sleep on your customers who know custom leather work and they have been buying and they, they know what they have into it and this also caters, uh, goes into your pricing point too by doing these extra old school stages because you want your customer to see the work that you put into their piece. So sometimes, now if you, if you have a schedule like mine and a lot of other crafters that are out there, you know, sometimes you want to get straight to the edge coat or you want to go straight to the gum track because you have to speed up time a lot. Now, with the, the edge coat, you have to let it dry, and as it dries, it'll dry to that waxy look. Same thing with your gum track. Once you put your gum track on, you still have to come back with your burnish, with your edge slicker and slick that gum track down. Now, that gum track is transparent, so your colors, it will not cover up your colors or change your colors. And the great part about gum track also is it's water-based. And this is part of the EcoFlow brand or EcoFlow brand. So it works great with all of the EcoFlow or EcoFlow dyes. But what I wanted you guys to see off of this is how it marries the two pieces together. Now, this is a very vital point, And let me bring this back up. This is a very crucial point in your work because you don't want a customer to be able to determine the two, the separation of the two pieces. And that's what all of these little tips and the videos that I put out are for. So it helps cover, uh, it, it helps mask that seam. You guys have, you probably have uh, made some pieces or made some products on your own and you just can't get that seam out of it. You, you, it is still, you still can see where the two pieces are together because it has that line down the middle. Just like if I put my two fingers, to put my hands together, you can see that line down the middle. I really like the beeswax over everything else, even above the edge coat. Now, the edge coat will go down into the, the seam of the two pieces, but most likely you're going to have to apply a second coat so the wax in the edge coat can sit on top of that to really mask that seam. Now, when you're working with a, a liner, a pig liner or a goat skin, this is Moroccan goat skin on the inside of this liner. When you're working with pieces like this, when you trim these off, when you uh, trim the excess off, 
you want to make sure you remember to angle your blade a little bit so the bottom of your liner is kind of tapered back. That's another hidden little jewel that I learned along the way. Do not cut it flush. Now, if you're putting a, uh, uh, a seven ounce uh, veg tan belt and then you're putting a, a 1.5 or a two ounce veg tan backing on the back of those belts. Now you can cut those flesh, flush and it doesn't matter about that because you're gonna take your edge rounder, you'll take your edge rounder and knock those corners off. And you'll still go back, um, if I'm doing veg tan all the way, I would generally just go with my water, uh, which is a great old school way of doing it, and then just friction, that friction and heat will melt the fibers of the two veg tans together. Now there have been times that I'll put it on my belt sander, and I'll go ahead and even all of that out and let the heat from the, the sanding belt melt those two fibers together. But here it is, ladies and gentlemen, we're at the 16 minute mark, and this is what I really wanted to share with you. Beeswax, very cheap, way cheaper than going buying the gum track. It's even cheaper than going buying the edge coat. And it makes your work look just as professional and as good and you guys can see that it looks just as good I see a spot uh, as any of the others out there so especially um, if you're trying to be on the economical side where you can maximize minimize your spending and maximize your profits and you're going to get the same result the same result if not even better and I would encourage you to play with it Play with it. Like I said, a two pound bag of beeswax, very cheap for less than two bucks. And you can make it right there in your home and you have an endless supply, depending on the size pot or pan you want to put it in. That's how big it is. Then you just cut it off into little squares. Um, you can tell how tall. Uh, I used a little old tin pot uh, that was I got from a flea market or a local flea market for a buck. And that's all that I use it for is to melt my beeswax pellets. And this is how tall it comes, that two pound bag to make it that tall. And then I uh, dumped it out of that pot and cut it into squares. And then uh, what I did, I use it. And that's what made it round like that. So you don't have to go out and buy no fancy stencil and all that stuff to get it a certain shape. Just cut it in squares. Because what you're looking for, you want the result of a nice edge finish a nice burnt finish and it looks very good now me myself i'm going to incorporate uh, another process i am going to go uh still with the gum track on there because i wanted to have that gloss pop the beeswax actually gives it a nice edge finish and it looks just like so you can save those seven, eight, nine, ten dollars or whatever edge coat may cost. Just go and get you a, a cheap little bag of beeswax and just use the gum track. The gum track is going to bring out that nice shine, that nice pop. And especially when I come back and put that because I, I honestly believe and I'm not going to keep you guys any longer. I honestly believe that you still can put your super sheen maybe on the edge if you want that nice gloss pop. So you probably can eliminate the gum track and just by using with your super sheen and just have a nice finish. Hey, I thank you guys for chilling with me these 18, all uh, going on 19 minutes. I'm getting back into the saddle of doing these videos because I've learned so much over the past few several months and I'm dying to share it with you guys and get you back and get your game and, and increase your game so you can get out here and play with the big boys. Again, if you want to book me and have me come into your city to show you the uh, seminars and workshops on how, we, how you can take your leather business and make a lot of money, all you have to do is hit me up on Facebook at Book Robert D. Muhammad and I'll come in and not just lay out how to do various projects. For the first part of the day, we'll do some leather crafting and leather work. And then the second part of that day, then we'll come in and we'll do the business side. And I teach you guys how you can make money in this business and you don't have to go out and work for anybody else. Hey, 
I'm the leather cowboy, Robert D. Muhammad, right here at Premier Leather Crafters in the dirty, dirty. Oh yeah, and y'all check out the new hat lines. The new hat lines are coming out next year. We already got these in production, and this will be one of the projects that I will come into your city and teach you guys how to do so you can come up with your own line and your own brand. Hey, I'll see you guys on the other side. Keep it crafting. I'll see you next video.